Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hi, and welcome to another session of Forum on Safety. My name is Pete Latanzio, and I'm the Chief of the Town of Colony Department of Fire Services. And on today's show, um, Steve, Sergeant Steve McClasco from the Town of Colony Police Department has joined us. Uh, good afternoon, Steve, and welcome. Thanks, Steve. How are you? Very good. Good. Steve, um, why don't you tell us a little bit, first of all, about the Colony Police Department, the amount of membership you have and um, the amount of calls you have, that type of stuff, so people have an idea. Uh, the Colony Police uh, is a 109, right now 109 police officers. Um, we run about 85, 80 to 85,000 calls a year, and that's including that's including everything, traffic stops, and and um, but a every call for service is recorded. About 85,000 calls a year. We also also have maybe 40 or 50 civilian em employee staff counting our communications and uh, the in the um, court court personnel. That, that work for the police department. 85,000 calls, that seems like an awful lot for the town of Colony. It's a lot of calls and, and they keep busy every day. Yeah, I've, I hear them on the radio and, and the guys out on the street are definitely out there hustling. Um, and there's, you've seen a steady increase in the amount of calls over there too, haven't you? Yeah, I've been here about 20 years and it's, uh, you know, it's like anything else. It, you know, everybody else has gotten busier and so we as the population has risen and, you know, more development is coming to town, the town has grown and as that grows, your, your calls for services are going to go up. Well, I know Colony Police Department has been a very progressive police department, um, and, and they've ventured out into a lot of different areas. You know, you already mentioned the communicators, and I know we have a really top-notch uh, 911 center here in the town, but the police department itself has done some other initiatives, um, such as what we're going to talk about today is the bicycle patrol, but I know you have other things, too, as an ATV patrol and uh, the traffic safety division. Um, can you kind of talk about some of those other areas that you guys have also? Yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, sp well, officers are specialized. Everybody has their basic jobs, either patrol officer or detective, but we have a, a special services team or a, ta a SWAT team that's, um, you know, that's been used and they, they, train, they train 12 hours a month, at least a minimum of 12 hours a month. And um, we have the motorcycles, which have been around since I've been here. Um, and those guys will ride. You'll see them riding sometime between April and November on the motorcycles. The ATVs are relatively new, but it's a, a good program for some of the ATV problems and the, the problems we have with uh, um, minors, dr underage drinking in, in the woods and stuff like that, where we're able to get to them on the ATVs where you can't get to them from a car or even, even walking. So those are real quick three, three specialized programs that only certain officers can do. It's not o open to everybody, and you, you have to pr pass certain criteria to be able to do it. And then our, one of our newer ventures is uh, the police mountain bike program. How long have you, have you had the mountain bikes now? It's right around between three and four years it's been, we've had the uh, police mountain bike. It's slowly growing where it's now all of a sudden you're starting to see us more and more out there. And we started with two officers and now we're up to, uh, we're up to six. And you know, hopefully by this time next year we'll be probably up to nine. And initially when, when the PD started into this, this was done on a grant that you were able to get the initial bikes? Right, yeah, we were able to buy, buy every, pretty much everything on a grant. And now, um, since we have them, it's, we have a line item budget and you know, we provide for all the maintenance and any new equipment uh, through the budget. With this being said, we've got this mountain bike unit. What is, what's the, the crux to having this and what are, the, what are the advantages of having something like this for the town? Well, the mountain bikes, what they do is they're, they're twofold. They, that anybody, a police officer on a mountain bike can do standard police work, right? They can answer calls, they can stop cars, they can patrol parking lots, but what's nice about it is they're silent. They're silent, people don't notice them like they notice a police car, right? If, if a police car pulls into the parking lot, if someone's looking for the police car, they're gonna see it. A mountain bike can come in, these guys are, our officers are trained that they can, you know, they ride over rough terrain around curbs you know, over curbs, and so they can come into a parking lot and no one knows it, and they can ride right up on people who are committing a crime or, mm. you, know, not, you know, which is what we're looking at sometimes when we're in a parking lot, people committing crimes or doing something 
they shouldn't be doing. And this has been very successful so far. You've, you've made arrests made as a result of this type of attack? Our LAR officers on the bikes, they've made arrests, they've stopped cars, they've, they've uh, helped um, solve cases, they've special filed people that have wanted people, you know what I mean? And um, just the in general day-to-day -day contact with the public has worked out, worked out excellent with it. You know, I mean, you'll see them driving up and down Wolf Road. You'll see, you know, on Bout Road even, you know, even some more rural areas going from one neighborhood to another, riding in the neighborhoods. And uh, this, just the fact that the bike goes through sometimes is a deterrent to crime. So it's not just limited to our parks or the bike trails. You, you guys are all over the place. We're, we're all over the place. And obviously, we, we try to hit the parks. Um, we'll go on the bike trails, but it, the bike trails are, a lot of times when we go on the bike trails, it's more of a community service event. You know, we're there, you know, let people know that we're there, but mm -hmm. the, there's not a lot of crime on the bike trails, which is, which is nice. It, it's a beautiful bike trail, and um, our guys will go there, and, you know, you talk to the people that are there, and, uh, and that's uh, what's, what's nice about that. It's easy to get to, but, if, you know, if you have a child that's lost, you know, someone loses their child on a bike trail or there's a problem, you know, the bike's going to be right there and, and cover it relatively quick. Now, you, were, you mentioned before about some of the other specialized uh, groups in the PD and some of the training they go through. Now, can just any officer sign up for this and you give them a bike and off they go? No, no. You, you have to. Uh, there's a week-long mountain, police mountain bike school that's, uh, that's put on by DCJS and then each a, a certain agency, like I went to SUNY Police Department at the campus for, for my bike school. Uh, Troy Police Department has sponsored it in the past. Saratoga Police Department. And you have to, in order to be a um, trainer, you have, you have to train several classes in bike riding before you can go teach someone else. And it's a, a week-long school. And a, a lot of it, what they teach you, they teach you how to fall off the bike. They teach you how to mount the bike properly, how to dismount the bike properly, how to, how to fight from the bike, how to shoot your gun from the bike. They, a lot of it is uh, real slow riding where you have to ride through cones. You, you can't put your feet down when you're riding through the cones. You know, and you have to make it through the cones. It's called the skills course. And um, if you don't make it through the cones, you don't pass the course. There's, there's a written test. If you don't pass the written test, you don't pass the course. And then there's these long bike rides, up to, up to 30 mile rides, you know, 30, 35 mile rides. Not, you know, with hills, with, with everything. So this so, sounds like it's a pretty intensive hands-on program that that our people have to go through in order to qualify for this program yeah every everybody that rides everybody you see rides a bike they, they've been through the school you can't you can't ride it until you've gone to the school it's it's a it's it's a fun school I gotta it's you know sometimes I was you know I mean I thought I was in better shape than I was those guys they, <laughs> a little I was, bit of an eye-opener for yeah, you yeah, I was it? a little sore after <laughs> after that and you're gonna be sore in the beginning got it you know I don't care you're gonna be sore your legs are gonna be sore your your um, your butt's going to be sore. It's just it is until you get used to it, and then mm -hmm. the more you ride, the better you get at it. Um, you were talking about when you mentioned before that you know you get down onto the bike trails, and a lot of times it's a it's a community relation thing. Is there a lot of things that go along with the bike patrol that you guys do as community relation things? I know you're big into the bike helmets. Obviously, um, it's it's a safety issue, and anybody if you want to talk about the bike helmets a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk about some of the safety equipment that's, that's on the bike. Um, first of all, the bikes, in order to be ridden at night, they have to have a front light and they have to have a rear light. They really just, they have to have a bell, and then every one of our officers have to wear a helmet. This is a, this is a uh, bell helmet that's provided to us by, by, the, by the police department. And when every officer rides, even though they're adults, they have to wear a helmet. All right? the, the helmet is, you know, in a, in a low-speed crash, this helmet is going is to definitely help them out more than, than not, not wearing a helmet. And so part of our day-to-day -day routine is as we're going through neighborhoods and we'll see younger children without their helmet on, we'll stop them, you know, have a conversation of where the helmet is, and 99% of the time it's home in the garage. The parents buy the helmet, you know, and, and their son or daughter go, hey, I'm going out, and, you know, they either take the helmet with them and then take it off because it's not cool or it's, or it's, uh, you know, they just take off without it. Mm -hmm. and mom, mom and dad didn't check because they figure, you know, I'm going to give them a little leeway and, you know, hopefully they're doing what I tell them to do. And so we'll take them home and, you know, speak to the parents and explain that, they, you know, they have to wear their helmet. It is the law, you know, and it's going to, it's to their advantage to, to wear it just for their, their safety. You know? so, so there is a law that, that individuals have to wear a helmet? For children 12 and under. Okay. Right. They have to, they have to wear a helmet. I think it's 12. I hope that's what it is. 
right? But yeah, they have to wear a helmet in New York State. Okay. Right? That's a state law and it's uh, punishable. The parents can be issued a uh, vehicle and traffic violation ticket. Right, what's called a, a T sled or a UTT, and they can be issued that if they're in control of their children and they don't have a helmet on. Okay. Are you finding a good compliance with that? Are we seeing more and more kids wearing helmets now? And I know when I grew up, I mean, nobody ever had bike no. helmets. No. And, and again, I think you kind of mentioned it too, that you probably get to a certain age and kids don't think it's cool anymore, and a lot of adults, but I know I noticed there seems to be a lot of, a lot of people riding bikes that are wearing helmets. So do you see that message getting out there and people starting to comply with that? I, I see the message getting out, especially, you know, as this generation gets older, they're going to, if they continue riding, they're, they're going to wear, wear the helmets. I ran into a guy on a bike trail on my own personal bike the other day, and he, uh, he was riding out to Maine. He had his helmet on, you know what I mean? So I would say, and he's, like, God bless him, driving out to Maine on his bicycle. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a hike. A, that's a hike. That's going to be a hike. But, I mean, he had his helmet on. I'd say the majority of people I see have their helmet on. You'll see some older people just, like, they don't wear it because for whatever reason, but I think, you know, most of the kids do, and you know, we occasionally get where they're, you know, at that age where mm -hmm. they don't want to wear it. Good, good. Well, again, I, I think it's, it's a piece of safety equipment that is going to save lives. It has saved lives over the year, and, uh, you know, obviously the more people wear them, the safer they're going to be. Right. What are some of the other safety equipment that you feature on these? On these? doesn't look like there's a whole lot, but I think you've got a lot compressed into a small piece of equipment. We, we have a lot on, on the bike. If you look in the front, there's a, like I said, there's a headlight on the front. Matter of fact, we're in the process of buying some new lights for the bike, which have a red light and a blue light on them. So when they do make traffic stops, it's, uh, it's uh, more in the line of, of a, a vehicle stopping you. Um, it has a rear tail light, and it has, a, it has a bell, or we actually have a horn on it. Um, we, have, um, we also have, they have certain reflectors that have to be on it. We have them on it. Every bike has to have them reflectors. And the same thing, the bikes follow the same rules of the road as cars. They ride on the same side of the road as a car. If there's a stop sign, they have to stop. If there's a red light, they have to stop. You know, they have to yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk. Now, th like this, is, this is all bike riders, not all just you folks. No, this is anybody who's out anybody. on a bike. And I think there's a lot of confusion with that. And again, I know personally I've been on the road and I've seen a lot of bikers who think, I don't have to stop for any of that stuff. Right, they, they do. They have the same rules as everybody else, the same thing. They have to ride on the same side of the road. If they're riding, you, you walk against traffic, you ride with traffic. And you, you really should ride in the road. You're not supposed to ride on the sidewalk. I mean, um, you, you get, you're get you supposed to go as far as right as you can on the bike, on the roadway. So if there's the white fog line and you got room on the other side of it, you probably should go just on the other side of it. But sometimes you can't sometimes. So you have to get as close to that white white line or what they call the fog line is, you know, as, as you can. And, and you always look out your rear. A lot of, you'll see the real riders have some type of mirror either on their helmet mm -hmm. or on the bike. I, I don't want to say real riders, but guys that have been riding, people have been riding a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's to that's to their advantage to see what's coming up on them like anything else. But that's sa same rules. One of the issues we run into is you get to the red light and it doesn't change, right? And, and it was recently in the Times Union and our suggestion is the same thing I ran into today on Route 2 in Park. My bike is not going to set off the sensor on, on Park Avenue. They have, on all the intersections like that, they had the button to push, like if you're going to cross the street. Yes. M my suggestion is you push the button and you cross the street. And wait the for light the light to cycle wait, through. Wait for the light to cycle through. And then, yeah. then go with, with traffic. Well, uh, and I, I'm sure that you've run into this. What about the motorist? What kind of uh, room should they give a bike, person on a bike? The motorists, when they pass up, when they see a bicyclist on the road and they pass a bicycle, they should give them a minimum of three feet to their to the left of them. Right, if the bike's going down the road, they should give them three feet when they pass a minimum of three feet. Because again, you don't know what's going to happen with the bicyclist. Anything all of a sudden they could have a flat. They could there's a lot of stuff on the side of the road. You know, mm -hmm. debris. They could hit that. They could fall. It's there's that saying. It's not if you fall. It's when you fall. And if they're too close to them, they're going to fall either into the side of the car or they can actually fall down to the ground and end up underneath the car. So if you give them enough of a berth, that, that's fine. You, you don't have to, you, you really shouldn't be um, tooting your horn. A lot of 
you'll see some people that do. They were told that at one time, but you really don't. You don't have to, and it's 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 um, suggested that you don't. If you read the bicycle safety guys is put out by the state of New York, they're just give them a wide berth, move to the right. Most bicyclists know you're coming. They can feel your presence for the most part, and um, and then just continue on. But and they're going to follow. They're going to follow the same route you're going to follow. You're going to see them using their hand and arm signals. You know, a good bicyclist is going to tell you that you're, he's turning left or he's turning right mm -hmm. or he's stopping. And that's he should be, he or she should be using their hand and arm signals when they're turning because you want to show that courtesy to the other driver so he know, he or she knows that you are, as a bicyclist, making the turn. Okay. Uh, you carry, I see there's a little pack on the back. Obviously, you carry a whole array of paperwork so you can handle all kinds of police reports and incidents that are out on the street and you, you carry all your materials right with you? Right, in that, in that back we'll carry, in the one underneath the seat right now, that's a, that carries an extra tube and some tools to, carry, to fix a tube or to fix a flat. So if I have a flat on the side of the road, instead of calling for a unit to come and get me and bring me, I can actually pretty much take the flat, take that spare out, put a new, uh, or take that tube out, put a new tube in, and, and they have a pump on the side you know, that we all okay. carry, and you're able to pump up the tire and, and move along. But then they, they all come with this bag in the back, and, uh, and um, we carry, you carry your ticket book with you. You, can carry, uh, you carry all your necessary paperwork that you need to get throughout the day. So and like you said before, you are a full-service police officer out on the street. On the street, absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, we talked about some of the features on the bike, and, and I guess looking at your uniform, it doesn't look like you had a traditional police uniform, yet you still carry everything that a police officer carries. The, the only difference is I actually get to wear, I'm the only, my, the bike guys are the only guys who get to wear short pants in the summertime on the, on the bike in our sneakers. And uh, we wear uh, a polo shirt, but I wear the same gun belt and everything that's on this gun belt is on the same gun belt that I wear when I'm in my uh, blue dress uniform. You know, I, I'm right now, you probably, you probably can see some of the outline, but I'm wearing my my ballistic vest, and so when I ride ride the bike, I'm not not only wearing my ballistic vest and my belt, so it's probably adding about 15 pounds of weight to me because you know I have my portable radio and and all the all the things that go with it. So you, you're adding a little weight to it. Is that also? I, mean, I guess that goes back to part of the school. They teach you how to uh, compensate for the extra weight and and the and the one the weight. One, of, one of your rides in the school is you have to ride. One, they try to you know make it as comfortable as possible. One day on our night ride, you have to wear your full police uniform, including your gun belt, when, when you ride. So you're you're used to it, you know. So that's yeah. And then the more again, it's like anything else. The more you ride, the better. Mm -hmm. The better you get used to it. And you you're constantly kind of adjusting your belt in the beginning to get everything in the place you want. So when you you know you're getting a good push on the pedal, it, it doesn't you know it's not interfering with you. Same thing with your vest. You're trying to get you get that adjusted. So when you're pedaling, it's not moving up and down on you. Um, you know, I guess we, we traditionally think of seeing people out on the road on bikes just during the day, but is this, is this a program that's working all three shifts, 24 hours a day, weather permitting? Yeah, they're out. They're out. You'll see them out. Usually at night, usually about, you know, depends on, it could be out all night, right, until 7 in the morning. You know, it depends on what's going on. And sometimes it depends on how busy it is because we take our bikes where we're going and we mount them on the back of the cars. And what they'll do is when, when time permits, they'll start patrolling on the bikes and then in their zones and then they'll answer calls. And then sometimes we'll, we'll have issues like we'll have criminal mischief issues and we'll actually put, they'll just be right on in the bike and they'll leave from the station to wherever they're going to, to um, do their, their patrol. Well, again, the town's 54 square miles, so even leaving from the police station could be a little bit of a ride. Yeah, probably it, it's um, not as far as you think. The station's pretty well centrally located, and probably more if you went out toward Kmart and went by 155, that might be a little bit more of a ride, but it's really not on a bike. You can, you can cover that from here to the station, and you know, a good rider can do it in 10 minutes or less. Okay. You know, so, and I mean, that's, these guys that all ride, they ride, you know, every one of them pretty much rides on their own also. And I mean, they, 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 you, if you see them moving, you can see them, they're moving right out. Um, I, I know you mentioned before that uh, you took your training over at, at uh, SUNY and uh, Troy was sponsoring a class. Is there a lot of other PDs in the area that have kind of gone to this concept now? And um, pretty much, pretty much, I would probably say 90% of the police departments in the area, including RPI campus 
police or campus, whatever, campus, public safety, mm -hmm. union out. The squall's in, there's a, a guy there from RPI and a guy from, uh, from, um, from union. So I mean, even the campuses have, have caught, on, caught on to the bike because you can cover so much ground on the bike. But yeah, I would say just about 90% of the PDs. You know, from I, I know guys from Green Island, guys from Waterbury, the city of Albany, city of Schenectady, city of Troy, um, Boston Spa, you know, Skodak, Skodak PD, I mean, they all, all of them have hmm. some, some type of bike patrol. Pl places you wouldn't think, the Albany County Sheriff's Department has, at the airport is a bike patrol. Yeah, you wouldn't think that, because they don't seem to have a whole lot of area if you're just looking at the terminal, but if you look at the whole property. Right, yep, and they could cover a lot of ground on a bike before a car can even think of getting there. Hmm. Well, it's very interesting, and, and again, it, it sounds like from the number of PDs that are using this, it's a very successful tool and uh, it's, it's, again, it sounds like it's a real advantage um, to the town of Colony to have this type of system. And you said we have six now and you hope to go to eight for next year? You have six, six riders now and four bikes and hopefully next year we'll go to eight officers and, uh, and five bikes. That's, that's the plan right now. And is this just seasonal? I mean, are you just like, uh, you know, from, from May to September type of thing or how often do uh, you guys get these out? Go, um, we can, once the snow is gone, they come out. And we'll ride pretty much right up until the next snow, which could be, you know, I mean, it depends. And, you know, obviously we give them the choice if it's blustery cold out. Nobody, nobody wants to be on the bike. Yeah. But, I mean, um, they'll go until usually November, sometime in November. And then, you know, we'll be out. You'll see us out on Halloween night on these bikes. You know, but, yeah, November, early December, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll probably be done by then. So about eight, eight months. When the officer takes these out, I mean, is he, when he comes in for briefing every day, if he's, if he's a bike officer, is he told he's going to take his bike out, or is it a given that if he's a bike officer, the bike goes with him, he'll stay in the car and answer his calls, whatever, but as time permits, he'll, he'll swap over, or if there's a special detail, you'll put him out on that right away? That, but, oh, I'm sorry. Go but on. no, does the officer have the choice as to how to do it? I mean, a lot of times? No, if he's a bike officer, he takes that bike out every day. Okay. That's his, uh, that's his extra tool that he takes out with him, and... Um, He'll, he'll go out with it. Obviously, if it's a torrential downpour and it's supposed to rain all day, we give him that option right. of you, you don't have to. I mean, I'm not gonna, we're not going to make him ride in the rain. But if we have a detail and that detail's going on and they're supposed to ride in it, you know, I mean, we all have raincoats, we all have rain gear. They're going to they're gonna go out in the rain. But, I mean, for day-to-day -day patrol, we, we give them that detail. But it goes out with them every day. Hmm. Hmm. And they do, you know, we have guys, the DARE guys are doing bike rodeos, and they bring the bikes with them to the bike rodeos. You know, for the safety there, and you know, teaching the children about the safety. So these guys are separate from the dare unit. They have nothing. It's two, two, dis two different units. Uh, we have we have officers that are assigned to the dare unit that are yeah. bike officers, and they oh, okay. they do you stuff do. with dare, and they also come out on patrol. You okay. know, they're out now. They'll be out like if they have a break between school between two schools, and they have an hour. You'll hear them out on a bike. You know, to be out patrolling the neighborhood. You know, and you'll hear them say, "I'll be in the Latham area, or I'll be on Wolf Road," and they'll be out on a bike on the Wolf Road area. Oh. So they, they do both. They do it while they're, you know, at the schools and then they, you know, sometimes they'll have, you know, only a half a day of schools and the other half they'll come out on the road and they'll do bike patrol. Well, I, again, I think it's great that uh, you guys have the ability to have this type of equipment. Uh, I know from being in the town, we do have a, a lot of back trails for connecting the schools, connecting neighborhoods, and I, I think this really gives you a step up on a lot of folks to be able to get into these areas and to keep an eye on things. Um, is there any disadvantages to having these? <laughs> not, not that I can think of right now. I, I mean, I mean obviously you don't have. It. Probably is is the probably the biggest disadvantage I would say we in, in the town of Colony have is if you're f further away from a call, then normally it would be easy to get to in a car. But because you're further away on the bike, and sometimes you might have to bring the bike back to the car and go to the car. But that's if I would say that's probably the only disadvantage. Which is some. Minor one. Most guys that can ride, most guys that ride are going to be able to get get around pretty. Quick. They're going to get around pretty quick, and they're going to, you know, I mean, they know how to ride on the road, and they know how to what we call taking the lane, you know, and getting themselves right into traffic, and you know, go, going on, going on priority one calls. I mean, they all, they all can do it. What kind of response have you had from the public that you run into? The, you're very, you're very approachable on a bike. Everybody, everybody wants to talk to you. Little kids. You know, older people and even the criminal element will come up and, and speak to you. You're, you're very approachable. I mean, we, it's just that 
they, they like the idea of the bike, you know, they want to see it, they want to know about it. A lot of people don't realize that we have a, a bike patrol colony, and they'll, they'll, that's one of the first things to say, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that you guys rode bikes in colony. And, you know, when we explain the situation and how we use it and what we use it for, they're going, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. That makes sense why we use it. So, you know, yeah, it's very, very positive program for, for the whole public. They, you go out down the streets, everybody's waving to you. They're, they're glad to see you. You know, all the neighborhood people are glad to see you. So it's, it's good. Good. Uh, I know, you know, back in the old days when a lot of the cities had uh, officers working, working beats and having street patrols, you're almost back to that same philosophy uh, getting into this type of thing because you are so approachable and I think folks have an easier time coming up and stopping you and talking to you for a minute than they are with that police car. Um, uh, and I think you get to know the neighborhood and you get to know the people somewhat too. So, again, I, I think that's probably a real comfort level for a lot of folks that are out there. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Chief. That it, it definitely is. People people like seeing it, and they like you know they like the fact that we're in their neighborhood too. You know, we're we're that we're a crime deterrent, and you know they know if something's going to happen, we're going to be right there. Do they try? Do you do your guys try and hit different neighborhoods, or uh, is there any particular order, or is it just kind of a random type of thing? So you know, and I'll use an example. Are you, maybe they're concentrating in Colony Village today. Uh, are they going to try and maybe get up to Midway's district tomorrow or another part of the town? Do they try to mix it up pretty good so that they're around all the different areas? Yeah, all your, all your patrol is, is random. So they'll, you'll never know all of a sudden I'll just hear them call out in the neighborhood and I'll go, geez, I, I didn't even think of that neighborhood. And they'll, they'll be up in that neighborhood. And obviously if we have a pro problem spot neighborhood where we're having uh, issues with whatever, vandalism or car larcenies, then we'll concentrate on, on those neighborhoods more than we will where there's there's no issues but yeah they'll, they'll hit every pretty much all the neighborhoods as they they can in in their patrol because they're assigned to different zones every day so when they get out of the car on the bike they're in a different zone than they were you know earlier mm -hmm. so that, yeah you know i mean they might be basically work the north side of town but they you know so they'll be in different neighborhoods in the whole north side of town and if they work the south side of town they'll be in different neighborhoods in the south side of town well, again, I think it's a great program, and, uh, you know, I, I guess if there's anybody out there who's, who's on the wrong side of the law, you just never know who's going to be sneaking up on you because uh, that traditional white car with the blue stripes and the red light on the roof may not be the, the thing that you're gonna, it's going to nail you. It's going to be somebody just riding along on a bicycle and um, snagging up behind you. So. Yep. Yeah, and that's the part we like. I mean, you know, I mean, all the, they're all cops out there, and we all like, to be honest with you, we all like catching the bad guys, and it's, and it's a lot of fun when you all of a sudden you sneak up right on them. You ride right up on them, and they're like, yeah, "Where'd even, you come?" I from? know you didn't even see even on simple stuff like a mi you know minor traffic offense where maybe they're on a the cell phone at the red light, and you just ride right up on them. You knock on their window, and they're like, "I, I didn't even see you." It's you know, it's, you know what? Could you pull right over here for me, please? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, they're very good. Works. It works out. It works out real good. Well, again, it's a great program. Um, it's good to see that it's going to continue and it's going to expand. And uh, it's just another thing that the town of Colony has to be proud of, um, to have this type of uh, service available and uh, the dedicated people from your department that are out there and making this work. So um, I would like to thank you for coming in today. And, uh, you know, is there anything else that you want to add that we haven't covered today? And the only thing I add is just I just want to reiterate, you know, wear your helmet. You know, if you ride, make sure you ride as far to the right as possible. You know, um, you have to follow the same vehicle and tra same rules as the car. Ride the same way the cars are going. Please don't ride against traffic. It's uh, the, the cars are expecting you to ride with them. And that's, if I can do that, if you can wear your helmet and follow the laws, you'll, you'll be good to go and, and have fun riding. Well, it seems like that helmet theme keeps coming back. You keep hammering that. That is definitely a, a, a big plus for everybody. I'm a big fan of the helmet. The helmet in, in, in the car with a seatbelt and the, you know, helmet on the bike. You would never see me on a bike without a helmet. Okay. Very good. Well, again, Sarge, thank you very much for coming in today. Uh, I think you've brought a lot in and uh, you've given out a lot of good information. And again, I, I just, I, I wonder how many people in the town even realize that the police department has, um, you know, a division such as this that's out there working for them. So I, I think it's great that you bring it to light and uh, they, they can see what's going on out there. We, we've expanded it this year, and we're going to expand it next year, and you're going to see more and more of us out there. It's going to be, we're going to be, a, we're, we're going to be a force, force to be around for a while. Great. Very, Very good. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Chief.
that will wrap up today's show. Uh, again, this was Forum on Safety, and um, uh, we will be back again in the future with some other public safety issues, and I uh, hope you tune in for it.